Hi everyone, my name is Bruce Wards and this is a glance of uh, yesterday's January 4th in the morning of what it looked like when I went outside. This is a fog of freezing rain that fell. I mean, it, does, it falls out of the sky, so thin the water vapor that it freezes instantly. And tonight they are announcing... Five more millimeters of rain. I like how I poked out a perfect triangle in that ice there. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, this is less than two minutes. I just wanted to get up a few shots, quick shots of what I used to do anyways. I used to be a photographer. I still am, but I'm off out of this world now on the moon in space. But I liked doing, and I still do, HDR photography. And just gonna give you two or three little examples of what you can do with the pictures, you know, to make winter scenes, how the snow and ice is sitting in the trees. I used to love doing this. And here's another shot of just the surrounding trees. So say to yourself, there's, there it is. Isn't that nice? The HDR, how it brings out a storybook-like image. That's why, you know, it was always nice doing projects uh, back in the years when I was making videos, always having HDR photography. Well, that's it guys, that's all I wanted to show you. Just a glimpse of that darn freezing rain that was falling, uh, which my mother, by the way, 15, 20 minutes away, um, had no rain in her end. So now it's all thawed down. I have the roof is frozen. I gotta have to go up there this morning. But um, I wanna welcome you all to uh, this research channel. Those of you coming here who have just arrived, are probably really lost. Um, I talk about a lot of different cameras. I talk about a lot of different telescopes. I'm using an Icon D850. This is what you're looking at right now. This is footage with the 14 inch telescope um, that this wonderful community raised for us to be able to view the surface. I'm just operating this telescope. You guys own this telescope, okay? And my goal here is to try to operate it as often as I can to get in close, to take suggestions from you guys, and I'm, you know, I'm alone in doing this. So say to yourself, give me some time to try to get back to you all. And that's the hardest part of having a YouTube channel, guys, is not being able to respond to every single comment. Those just arriving were finding UFOs on the surface. I found many different types of UFOs, but here's the thing, they're not all vessels some of them look alive and i said just again some of them look alive i know they are alive i feel it and that's just my belief but i'm here to share the research share what i'm finding up on the surface of the moon and you guys would not believe all the things that i'm finding i do get videos like this of zooming up also on the surface not just always zoomed up into the craters because the beauty of it all obviously is the entire surface and with this camera guys we're gonna see so many colors so yeah I'll zoom out a little bit a lot we get every step here you're gonna get the zoom out then you're gonna get zooming in and what I do is I do a lot of research on these findings so uh, what you guys saw a couple of days ago um, the UFO fleet flying by I'm still studying on this. I'm still doing thorough research, looking in my footage to find other crafts and vessels. And it's what I've been able to do with success for the past two years. And I'm so happy to be able to share this all with you guys. It's thanks to you that this channel is up because you guys are doing the shares, you're coming to view the channels. And for those that I hear all the time who say, I'm so sorry, Bruce, not to be able to contribute to this channel. What the heck are you talking about? If you're here viewing, if you took uh, five minutes out of your day, two minutes out of your day to stop by and to glance at a part of one of my videos. I thank you and that's all I'm asking you guys to do. I'm going to keep this up all the time. My work as better as it gets. I'm not going to charge people ever to see this nor to see the photography. Um, I have yet to set up another website for just all the photography and everything. But there's so much work being done and research in this. So many findings, guys. So I think it's the best thing to do exactly what I'm doing is getting 10, 15 minute videos up daily on each and every finding that I find out on the surface. Some people may disagree. I mean, we can disagree and I can be wrong sometimes too. You know, I posted a video of a tower inside of a Radisthenus crater. There's a definite straight object there. It looks like it's lying down sometimes, it looks like it's standing up. 
and I'm getting all this fuss about the shadows and this and what not and what that. Okay, we can disagree, but that, that goes with the turf. That, that goes with the field of work, right? I'm always going to get a bunch of trolls and uh, some people who don't know how to disagree and just want to thrash other channels, but it's okay. This is maddening, and this is what I like doing is waking up the sleepy slobbering trolls that are asleep and that are so close-minded that they believe that they are the only lucky species in the entire universe how lucky could we be yeah okay some of you will say well god said that they created us uniquely and we're here yes but if there are other parts of a bible that are missing i mean come on guys we've been finding bible parts in sunken um, caves filled with water every few months or years that we add to the Bible and change a story. So, And no, I'm not making this about the Bible, but this has to do with religion. Alien research is always going to have to do and linger around the, the fields uh, or topics of religion because this is what is keeping us all divided. And that's what I want you guys to understand, that when we come here, let's drop our religions. And I don't mean to change our traditions or to forget what we believe in. But when you're coming here, try to keep a scientific, uh, scientific point of view. And you can still talk about religion, guys. I'm just telling you. You know, in general, when you're looking at this, remain open-minded um, when I'm showing you these UFOs and biological creatures, whatever they may be on the surface. This channel is amazingly new. There's not another one out there like it. It's exclusive because, not because I'm better than anyone, because I've chosen my own area to work on and to show you guys. Each space channel has his own reason and belief for being here online to try to show someone something. And for me, I just want to show you guys the raw truth the documentation of all the different UFO types, which already we are up to 10, 15 different types, completely entirely different types of UFOs that I've been finding and documenting on the surface. Please look back into the videos, those just arriving. There's everything here. I found unknown celestial objects. I found asteroids. And no, I don't have hundreds of thousands of them, but I've documented and posted live videos of objects flying by the sun, and they're all here on this research channel. Nothing is over two years old here. Say to yourself that. So now we look back at the Nikon D3400, which is an amazing camera, but I would say is uh, probably a DSLR beginner camera. Um, it's amazingly inexpensive to be able to get up on the moon right away, and it's what I did with the budget that I had because the community raised the money for the scope, then I had to pay the taxes and get the options for it. And guys, money doesn't grow on trees. And you know, things are so darn expensive. But this is the Nikon D3400, 24 megapixel camera. So the one I'm using right now is the Nikon D850, 46 megapixel camera. But I still wanna show you guys the amazing view that you can get with just a basic regular DSLR. Check it out, guys. This is the area where I showed you the lines on the surface a couple of days ago. But this is the same view, but with the Nikon D3400 and only 24 megapixels. Look, the lines are really there on the surface. We're seeing straight paths, grid lines or grid marks that would make us believe it looks like something like the CERN or the Hydro-Quebec or maybe even projects of roads and housing. You know, think of it. We're seeing this symmetrical uh, value on the surface, which are 90 degree angles meeting up and turning in direct 90 degrees. It can't be natural. You plant lovers who have many plants, cactuses, trees, flowers in the yards, gardens, you know that when a plant is sick, you look closely on a leaf with a magnifying lens sometimes, and you could see a little bug, a parasite on the leaf. And then you're amazed and you say, oh, I didn't know that it was sick. Well, that, say to yourself, that is exactly how I found these UFOs on the surface. Like looking for parasites. Some people say they are parasites on my lens. No, they are parasites on the surface of the earth, of the moon, sorry. And probably in very, very gigantic proportions and sizes. For us to be able to see them from where we are. It's just amazing. So the vessels 
are shooting lights now on the surface. Whoa, now wait a minute. This is changing everything. It's changing everything I believe in. It's changing everything I ever thought or knew or, or thought that could have happened up there on the moon because now I'm adding this, this, you know, big thing to screw up everyone's beliefs again is that UFOs on the surface of the moon are actually shooting out um, projectiles, illuminated projectiles. And I'm calling it an illuminated projectile uh, solely because we don't know what they are. They're fireballs, leaving a bigger fireball, which looks controlled or driven. And at times, some of them look like clouds and mists, but we know, and we've heard of declassified UFOs. And from what we've learned from the Ufology Committee for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years, that clouds can appear over top of these ships. They do have some kind of a camouflage Obviously, if this is a secret project, if it's, uh, you know, whatever it may be, it, it has to be hidden some way. So how would you hide the biggest secret in the world? Well, let me tell you, you would hide it naturally, of course. So that way, everything people would say, you'd always have a response against the people trying to find you out and just say it's a natural a natural. Are humans also working in this? Hey, Mr. How Guy Garrett. Thanks Robert for the generous Goudreau, contributions. Thanks so much for I joining said the your community name right this time, and bro. for the support. Thanks for the generous contributions. Looking forward to interacting with you guys in the comment section. Mikhail Briner. Wow, bro. Thanks so much for the generous contributions. Thanks for being here, man.